Today, guys, we're going to be looking at whether or not sebum overproduction can really contribute to your hair loss. Should you be worrying and what exactly can you do about it? Stay tuned to find out more. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel, where we make in-depth, science-based videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. And if you are watching this video on sebum overproduction because you are personally worried about your own hair loss, then what you can do is click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert information on how to regrow healthy hair. So first guys, what exactly is sebum? Well, sebum is an oily substance produced by microscopic structures called sebaceous glands. These glands are found almost all over the body, including the scalp. Now the glands are attached to the hair follicle and excrete their sebum through the pore opening of the follicle. The sebum excreted by these glands mixes with other oils present on the surface of the scalp as well as with sweat. This mixture is the oily substance that you can feel and see on your scalp and hair. The function of this oil is to act as a barrier on the surface of the skin, regulating the penetration and absorption of various molecules. So sebum is essential for a healthy scalp. But like anything else, sebum is beneficial when produced in the correct quantities. Now secretion of the sebaceous glands is regulated by many factors, including hormones like DHT and progesterone. At birth, the glands are active, but their activity is then reduced until puberty. After puberty, sebum production increases steadily and goes on a slow, steady decline later in life. Sebum production also fluctuates as a function of major hormonal changes like pregnancy or the contraceptive pill. There are also seasonal variations, including an uptick in production during the summer months. If the production of sebum increases or decreases out of certain limits, problems will arise. Too little sebum will leave your scalp dry. On the other hand, an overproduction of sebum can lead to greasy, itchy scalp and oily hair. This is a problem that affects both men and women. Excess production of sebum can also lead to acne, especially on the face. Another major problem linked to an overproduction of sebum is dandruff. You see, most cases of dandruff are believed to be caused by a yeast called Melisazia. Melisazia is normally found in most healthy scalps, but in dandruff it grows completely out of control. And Melisazia feeds on sebum. As it feeds on it, it degrades it, releasing multiple fatty acids. Malasazia then consumes the saturated acids that it needs, leaving behind the unsaturated fatty acids. In susceptible individuals, these unsaturated fatty acids are absorbed by the outmost layer of the scalp. This results in the irritation, inflammation and scalp flaking that are the hallmarks of dandruff. But what about androgenetic alopecia? Could sebum overproduction also play a part in that? It is a common anecdotal observation amongst many doctors dealing with androgenetic alopecia that the bold scalp of these patients is often oily and shiny. There are also reports of microscopic examinations showing enlargement of the sebaceous glands. Histological analyses also confirm that the sebaceous glands are increased with size in patients with androgenetic alopecia, compared to control groups. Now, do make no mistake, this is correlational data. So we observe that androgenetic alopecia often goes hand in hand with enlarged sebaceous glands and increased sebum production. This does not necessarily prove that these sebaceous gland changes are the cause of the androgenetic alopecia. But it is certainly plausible to think of sebum overproduction as both a side effect as well as an aggravating factor of hair follicle miniaturization. As the follicles miniaturize, it opens up the way for the expansion of the neighboring sebaceous glands. The enlarged glands in turn step up their secretion of sebum, leading to the proliferation of malassezia and the creation of inflammatory compounds. These creep back into the follicle, potentially aggravating the follicle miniaturization and speeding up the balding process. Which brings us to the million dollar question. How exactly do you get rid of excess sebum in the process restoring your hair's healthy appearance and potentially averting all sorts of problems further down the line. Now guys, thankfully, there are several ways to deal with this problem, but today I'm going to focus on two big ones, diet and hair care. So first, let's look at diet. We have a lot of data from populations all over the world on the relation between acne, which, as we mentioned, is strongly linked to excess sebum and diet. And the evidence is pretty solid at this point. As diets westernize, acne increases, and the most aggravating foods are processed dairy foods, as well as foods with a high glycemic index. You know, that's typically like the packaged junk food that is just made up entirely of highly processed carbohydrates. 
Sadly, many people in the West practically live on this junk food, and the results are often visible on the face and scalp. Now, about the proper hair care habits to keep sebum production under control. Now, I'm going to sum this up in one sentence. Excessive shampooing. You see, our scalps, like the rest of our bodies, have evolved over millions of years to maintain the levels of sebum under control. And this is accomplished via natural feedback mechanisms. Each time you shampoo, especially when you use shampoos laden with harsh industrial chemicals, you strip your scalp of its natural oils. Your scalp then tries to compensate for this by stepping up its own sebum production, and to counteract this increased sebum production, most people actually started to increase the frequency of shampooing, often to the point of maybe two or three shampoos daily. Sadly, this leads to a vicious cycle. The increased shampooing causes excess sebum, which in turn stimulates even more shampooing and so on and so forth. So one of the first steps we recommend is A, switching to an all natural shampoo that is milder on the scalp, and B, cutting down the frequency of shampooing. We wouldn't recommend shampooing more than three times a week. I've also linked to some all natural shampoos and conditioners in the description below, so please do check them out. You can't go wrong with these. <sighs> Lastly, we recommend that you cut down on the excessive use of hair care products like hair gel and styling mousse. If possible, eliminate these products entirely. Click the video on the screen now to learn more about the truth about male pattern baldness, and you can also learn about Will's eight steps he used to regrow his healthy hair.